Well, hello, our fellow friends, our fellow neighbors, and our fellow shining stars. Next trolley stop is here, and our next trolley stop is now the first of 2022. Welcome back to a, another all new episode of the Empowered Publicity Children's Book Spotlight series, to be precise. We have reached episode number 138. That is the 138th trolley stop here at the Children's Book Spotlight series. Again, the first of 2022. Happy New Year from all of us here at Empowered Publicity. My name is John Masalonis, the manager here at Empowered Publicity. Thank you so much for spending some time with us wherever you are and wherever you may be. We hope that you and your loved ones had a blessed and magical holiday season, whether you celebrate Christmas or Kwanzaa or Hanukkah or Boxing Day. I was kind of getting into a little bit of a, of, of a joking, amusing mood during the holidays. You know, we our, our, our friends, our neighbors to the north in Canada celebrate Boxing Day, and I think in New Zealand, and I guess it's a day where there's a lot of shopping sales, if I'm not mistaken. I was joking around myself and I said, John, wouldn't there be, wouldn't it be pretty cool if there was a day where everyone would just celebrate their love of boxes? And you know what's one of the great things that's found in boxes? Children's books. Of course, if you get them from the deliveries of Amazon or if you go to your favorite bookstore and you crack open a brand new box of books and you see your favorite author and their brand new book, um, there's just going to be so much good. I feel so good about 2022 for us here at Empowered Publicity and for all of you. So we want to we extend our appreciation and our gratitude to all of you, our friends, our neighbors, and of course, our fellow shining stars for spending some time with us to begin your new year and to celebrate it on a powerful and empowering note. We're going to be sharing one of our favorite children's books to kick off the brand new year a wonderful new member of the Empowered Publicity family who has come into our lives over the course of these past uh, several weeks. And if you've been a follower of the program, if you've tuned into the Children's Book Spotlight series over the past now nearly three and a half years, you know how much we love dogs. And dogs provide unconditional love. It's long since been said, man's best friend. You spell dog, D-O-G, spelled backwards, is G-O-D. When a dog is in our life, or even another furry friend, it could be a cat, it could be uh, another animal that you may have, it may be a turtle, it may be a hamster, but there's that genuine, unconditional love. There's a bond of friendship that happens whenever we become an owner of a pet. But what happens when your pet receives a diagnosis? Everything changes, right? I know that uh, you know I, I had lost two dogs that I was uh, uh, very close with, uh, Hunter and Scotty, over the course of the past uh, uh, ten plus years of my life, and it was a it was a little bit of a difficult time, and it can be a difficult time for our children when they have someone that they rely on as one of their one of their sources of amusement and happiness and joy. Um, a true soul connection is established. And our little ones, when they hear that such and such has, has passed away, or even if, if their furry friend is not feeling good, um, children need our help. And one of the great things about children's books, one specific one in particular that we're going to be sharing on this week's Trolley Stop, is, is that children now have a resource, not only children, but parents, grandparents, educators, because we all have the child that lies within inside of us to help us through the experience of owning a furry friend, of loving a furry friend, but also losing a furry friend and to find the courage within, to connect to the courage within to share that love again. So if you're struggling through anything. It could be the loss of a furry friend. It could be the loss of a loved one. Uh, if you're struggling through anything to begin the new year, we encourage you. A great resource that is, again, that is now available. You can head on over to Amazon.com. You can also head on over to the official website of our featured guest here on episode number 138 of the Children's Book Spotlight series. You can log on to Portia Y. Claire.com. We have Portia's official website and her Facebook page and the Amazon link of her brand new book included in the description below, Best Friends Forever, A Puppy's Tale. It is now available courtesy of our friends at Miriam Laundry Publishing. If Amazon is your preferred vehicle of choice, you can leave a five-star review as that is one of the many ways that you can support Portia Claire, the wonderful work that she is doing for children, parents, families, and educators 
We're going to be talking about Scoopy and Sandy and everything else in between to kick off this new year. Joining us to kick off the brand new year of 2022 here at the Children's Book Spotlight Series, one of the newest members of the Empowered Publicity family, children's author, Portia Claire. So the trolley travels from San Diego all the way to South Carolina. Trolley's getting some mileage to begin the new year. Portia, thank you so much for spending some time with us here this week on the program. How are things with you? How are you? Thank you so much for having me, John. It's a pleasure to be here. We're doing well in South Carolina. Thank you so much for, for, for sharing all those kind sentiments. It's great to connect with South Carolina to begin the start of the year. <laughs> if all of what we're sharing thus far is inspiring you, if it's bringing more love and joy and especially healing into your life to begin the new year, if you know someone in need, whether it be a little one or whether it be an older best friend of yours who has lost a furry friend who is simply just going through a little bit of a, a little bit of a moment or a challenging season in their life. We encourage you to subscribe to Empowered Publicity's official YouTube channel and to share this very special trolley stop. That is episode number 138 of the Children's Book Spotlight series on your favorite social media platforms of your choosing. I want to first of all acknowledge you, Portia. For over 30 years, you have been of service to children. And I feel that that is a privilege when we have the opportunities to help children in any way, shape, or form. Uh, it really is a blessing. So I want to acknowledge you, first of all, for the work that you've been doing for, with children and for children for several decades, but for also writing this book because it's a very, it's, it's very much a needed message right now. So I'm, I'm just so happy for you and where you're at right now at this particular point in time in your life. Thank you, John. I appreciate that. I, I have had the privilege of serving um, children for 31 years now, and I believe that I was born to teach. So I'm excited yeah. about continuing that throughout my days. And I know that that's something that I will always do, whether I'm in a classroom or not. Um, I am a teacher. Uh, and that part of me, I'm, I'm grateful for. And to be able to extend that into writing children's books has been my privilege. I'm, I'm just really excited about everything that is occurring right now. Hmm. I love at the back of your book, and before we talk about Best Friends Forever Puppies Tale, you, you spent some time at Duke University and Regent University, but under your About the Author section, it says that you empower the children who have been entrusted to your care. That's, that's very deep and that's very profound. So we've obviously shared the fact that, you know, it, it seems like you just didn't wake up one day and say, I'm going to write. It, th th this has been in you for a long period of time serving the children. Could you, could you, sh could, we always like to have a little bit of a backstory, so to speak, okay. from the guests who join us on the Children's Book Spotlight series. Could you share with us where everything really all began with you and was it, you know, a series of experiences or was it a specific moment in time where, if, where you said, I am here to serve the children of the world? I have a very clear um, beginning of knowing that I knew that I knew that I knew that I was supposed to be teaching. I had the opportunity to work with um, a young man uh, during the summer who was a guest of a fraternity member. And I was out with that young man for the day. He was about six or seven years old. And during our outing, we went bowling. And I was able to teach this young man how to bowl, um, which is something that is very near and dear to my heart. It's something that my father taught me as a child. Mm. And as he continued to, to bowl, he got better and better and better at it. Um, and eventually I told him, I said, that's, I'm not giving you any more secrets. You look like you're getting ready to surpass me. And after spending the day with him, I resolved in my heart that I really, really wanted to be a teacher. I was vacillating between that and going into law, but mm -hmm. having that day with that child solidified in my heart that this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. I want to serve children. I want to work with children. I want to teach them. I want to give them the opportunity to learn and have them enjoy it in the process. And that experience, I think, really changed my life. I always knew that I wanted to write because I enjoyed writing as a child. And now I'm combining the two things that really bring me joy, teaching children 
and then actually writing stories that are still going to teach them, but in a different format. Hmm. That's such a beautiful story. And, you know, really when we're connected with our life's purpose, doors open up and mm -hmm. these doors help us to be able to, because it's long since it's long since been said that it takes a village, right? It also, it's been said that Rome wasn't yeah. built in a day. And, you know, to mm -hmm. be able to see all of the support that you've had, you know, with your, with your illustrator, Lisa Alderson, who's done a wonderful, wonderful job bringing this vision to life. Mm -hmm. And we'll obviously talk a little bit more about your book and the synergy that you have with Miriam Laundry Publishing. Um, I'm very touched about how this story came to fruition. So for some authors that write children's books, it's just this story, right? It comes out of their, out of their, their mind, their heart. For some people, it's a real life experience. It could be something very traumatic, something very challenging that really, um, you know, helps one to move through their own healing and then helps to bring more healing into the minds and hearts and souls of other people. Uh, for those who are unfamiliar with Best Friends Forever, A Puppy's Tale, and your story, could you share with us about um, what inspired you? And I should probably add in who inspired you to be able to write your brand new book? Indeed, it would be my pleasure. Actually, this story, Best Friends Forever, A Puppy's Tale, is a true story. It is my story. Um, it is a story that I lived and I was inspired to write by my daddy. Mm. Um, my father, who is uh, no longer with us, he's in heaven now, um, constantly said to me, Portia, what is it that you're doing with your books? You've been talking about writing for a while. Have you started writing anything yet? Have you put anything down on paper yet? And I said to him, Daddy, I have the thoughts in my head. I haven't put anything on paper yet. He said, Scoop, you need to do it now. Now is the acceptable time. Today is the day. So put your thoughts on paper now. Start writing today. Mm. And so I told him that I would. Um, and I kept my word to him and I wrote down my thoughts. And um, mm. as I began to really pursue writing, it seems like you were just saying, everything just came to me. Miriam Laundry Publishing was introduced to me. Then I was able to go through that process and she helped me to formulate my thoughts and make them the best that they could be. And through her, I was introduced to Lisa Alderson. Mm -hmm. So as I continued to progress forward and do those things that my father was charging me to do, everything did fall into place. And here we are today. And I'm so grateful for that. Your father sounds like a very, uh, it, it, it feels as if the, the bond that you shared and still share, mm -hmm. you know, one of the things that, um, that uh, you know, when we talk more about the book, we'll kind of further elaborate on this, but you know, when we lose someone, we only lose them in the physical sense, whether it be a dog, father, mother, spouse, child they're still with us we can still yes. maintain that bond with them being in heaven and us being here Absolutely. on here on earth um you see so you really had a lot of divine support to bring this 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 book to form and to shape uh, this is your first time being a children's yeah. author and just whenever we do something we talked about this in the empowered publicity green room a little bit whenever you're doing something for the first time if you're in a, uh, if you're writing a book for the first time, if you're opening up a business for the first time, you know, maybe it's the first time that you're in a, uh, in, in a committed relationship that can bring up, you know, some fears, challenges, uh, mm -hmm. stressors, troubles, worries, you name it. But eventually when we take, when we connect to the courage within us, when we take mm -hmm. the time to trust ourselves even more and just everything in life, things, and we take guided action, things always have a way of working themselves out. What were some of those challenges and ex uh, and problems that you feel that you experienced early on when it's like, okay, you want to write this book? What were some of those things that you feel that you had to move through? And then what were some of the things that helped you to get through to the other side of those challenges and difficulties and obstacles and, and problems along the way? Absolutely. Well, I think for me, the biggest challenge was exposing myself. I felt so vulnerable knowing that I needed to share more about me through this entire process. Um, writing a book 
is something that I want to do and I want it to be shared with people around the world. Mm. In order for people around the world to know it, then I would have to share that book in at social media. And for me, that was daunting. I, I could not wrap my mind around actually saying something to people on Facebook or any other social media, having to mm -hmm. speak about my book and share things with people just for me was so unsettling. But I recognized what my father said to me. He said, you have a message and you have so many messages on the inside of you that are going to help children around the world. And that compelled me to move past the fear of mm -hmm. exposing myself and being vulnerable in this kind of environment. Because I recognized that I wanted to share something with children. I wanted to help them as I always have. And so because of that, I had to push past the fear and I had to begin to do those things that were told to me by people who've been helping me throughout this process. There's so many people who've helped me who have expertise in areas that I don't, but I have to trust them and recognize that what they're asking me to do is helping me ultimately to do that, which I desire to do, and that's to serve children. So my mm -hmm. biggest fear was the social media, but the thing that pushed me beyond it was recognizing that this is a necessity. Mm -hmm. It is a part of the process so that I can share that which I have to give to children. And that's what we are today. I really appreciate you sharing that because I feel there's many people that are watching and that will be watching this episode over time, our interview, that can learn and benefit from that because um, it's, it's one thing when you're in the midst of, of having a fear or a challenge and, and knowing, you know, like for example, you know, already, you know, very early on, you've done an interview with one of the largest television stations in, in the Miami Fort Lauderdale area. So we encourage all of you to, uh, to check out Porsche's one-on-one -on -one interview with Jason Carter on WSFL TV's Inside South Florida. Whenever someone in, in any form of life does a television interview, it can be daunting. And mm -hmm. it, it's a matter of taking the necessary next steps, knowing that being able to share your message and share it with, uh, with large audiences, that that's a part of it. It's just also being very compassionate and gentle with yourself in the process of so the way that you, the, the approach that you've been taking to follow through, even in the midst of fear, I find uh, extraordinarily commendable and inspiring, and it can really benefit many people. So again, for those of you who are just tuning in, of course, we appreciate you spending some of your new year with us here at the Children's Book Spotlight Series, episode number 138. Our featured guest here on the program, children's author Portia Clare, her brand new book, Best Friends Forever, A Puppy's Tale. It is now available. It is now available through our friends at Miriam Laundry Publishing. You can head on over to Portia's official website, PortiaYClaire.com. You can also head on over to Amazon.com if that is your preferred online vehicle of choice. While on Amazon, one of the many ways that you can support Portia in addition to purchasing her copy, your copy of Best Friends Forever, A Puppy's Tale, is to leave a five-star review. Because you know Amazon, they love the reviews. Authors love the reviews. It's a way to increase the search engine criteria and the search engine optimization, all those, all those cool things behind the scenes that make all the authors even more well-known and successful. And this is truly, uh, you know, having the opportunities to read your book, Portia, um, I, I've learned so much from working with you in a short period of time. I've learned so much from your book because I feel, again, as we've talked about here, both on air and offer, we always have the inner child within us, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, the great thing about children's books is that they provide solace, comfort, support, healing. We you know, Let's say if there's a day where we feel we're all alone in the world and no one understands us, even if it's just, you know, we're in the midst of our own stuff, right? We have a children's book such as yours, Best Friends Forever, a Puppy's Table, a Tale, and you know everything is going to be okay. You know that everything is going to work itself out because that's how life always happens. Um, again, you know, the, the fact that we were introduced to Scoopy and to Sandy. I love the alliteration between the two. You got the S and S, Scoopy and Sandy. <laughs> um, this, this is such, a, you know, especially for little ones who are, who are being introduced to their first dog, right? You know, I, I think I remember growing up, my first dog, her name was Lady. And I think oh. that she was, I, I might've been like four, five, six, something along the lines of that. So 
I, I think it's a perfect time now more than any to hop into the pages of Best Friends Forever Puppy Still. Could you share with us, our listeners and viewers, our fellow friends and neighbors, and of course, our fellow shining stars, a little bit about Scoopy and Sandy and how they become best friends, really instant best friends, and the challenges that they experience along the way together. I would be happy to. Well, as I shared earlier, this is my story. This is a true story. Um, and at the beginning of the story, um, my dad is asking me if I would like to have a puppy. Mm -hmm. And I was elated because I recognized that this puppy was going to be my birthday present. I was turning four and I was getting a puppy for my birthday. And of course I wanted a girl because I'm a girl and I always wanted a sister. And so they shared with me that I would be getting a puppy. Uh, they told me the name of the puppy, but I couldn't pronounce it very well. I'd never heard of it. And I couldn't imagine what this puppy was or what mm -hmm. she looked like. And then we went finally to get her and I met her and I fell instantly in love with her. We did absolutely everything together. We played together, we slept together, we ate together, we sang together, we read together. She was my best friend and she was everything to me. Mm -hmm. And we were together for a while and then we moved to a different location. We moved to the District of Columbia. We actually were living in the Bahamas at the time and we moved to the District of Columbia. And of course, Sandy came with us and she flew on the airplane with us. And as a result of her flying on the airplane, um, something happened and she became ill. And our relationship changed a little bit because of that, because we had to care for her. Um, and as time progressed, she was able to get medication and she was better and she was doing fairly well. Um, but then there came a time um, when she was not doing fairly well. And my parents had to walk me through that process because it was challenging for me as a child to see her not doing well and really not being able to do anything to help her. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, as time progresses in the story, um, I actually lose her. And not, my parents were there to help me through that process as well, which was not easy, um, but we were able to do it together. And as time progressed in the story, I was able to recognize in a conversation with my dear friend, Sandy, after she was gone, that the love that I had for her would never change. Mm -hmm. But the relationship that I had with her did change because she wasn't physically there. And I missed that. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to continue to have that kind of relationship with another pet. And I wanted her permission to do that. And I believe that she granted me that permission. And from that point, I was ready to ask for another puppy. Mm -hmm. And another puppy was granted to me. And my relationship with him began. And it was just like the relationship with Sandy. A little different, but very much the same. I'm, I'm so grateful that you uh, have shared your book with us right now. And that, and of course, as well as the book being available, the fact that you're sharing with children that love is something that it, it's really, um, I, I think the best way that I can describe it is over over in my, in my kitchen, I've got this large poster of Winnie the Pooh and Piglet. And oh, it's, it, yes. it, it's one of Winnie the Pooh's most famous quotes, and it's, I'll paraphrase it, is that love is something that's, it's a feeling, right? Yes. You really can't put it into words. And I feel that, you know, especially as children, when they're growing up, their minds and their hearts are like sponges. They really are learning to love. And, Indeed. you know, pets are one of the most, uh, God's most beautiful creatures to be able I to agree. help children in that experience in the process. And sometimes we can, you know, when we're going through the loss of a pet, we can just, we, I, I, there's, um, there's a, a well-known author by the name of Christina Rasmussen. She had lost her husband due to cancer and she used oh, the man. term, the waiting room, that when we're in the midst of like, we lose someone in terms of, you know, whether it be, you know, a, a family member or a pet. And then there's the, the life after that, right? 
And it's a matter yes. of many of us can be in that waiting room wondering, is it safe? I love it. Yes. Yeah. Is it, yeah. can I get another dog? Can I get another cat? Will they be upset kind of thing? Um, one of the things that I really love to have our guests share on the program is some tangible information, useful tools, uh, tips, strategies, et cetera, and so forth. For those who have uh, lost a pet mm -hmm. or who are in the process of, you know, their, their, their pet is dying yes. and, they're, and they're in that waiting room or stepping into that waiting room, what would be some words of support and encouragement that you would share, that you'd like to share with those who are tuning in that can help them to realize that they don't have to be in that waiting room forever, that they can be on the other side of that while still being mindful of how they're feeling, their emotions and feelings? Okay, okay. that's a wonderful question. Um, and the first thing that comes to mind is to keep the memory of your pet alive. Mm. Your pet was a part of your family. Um, they, oftentimes you hear people say that, that your pet seems more like a human than an actual animal. Your pet is a part of you um, and keeping the memory of your pet alive, I think is important. Have conversations about your pet, have pictures about your pet. I actually have a little bronze figurine of adoption of Sandy that I have in my home. Um, there are pictures that I have of her. There are pictures that I've shared of her in my book. And I have additional pictures of her and my dad as well. Mm -hmm. So keep the memory of your pet alive. Have pictures around. You may have a special place in your home that you have set aside and created for your pet that might have some memorabilia that your pet, maybe a toy that your pet had, some pictures of you and your pet together. Um, that's something that you can do in your home. Um, you may even take some time to volunteer at an animal shelter. Mm. Um, you may, you know, not be ready to get another pet yet, but you may want to be around pets and mm. you can share that love that you have for the pet that has been lost with other pets who might be in an animal shelter. And then of course, you may grow to the point where you're ready to have another pet and you can actually purchase another pet. And in doing so, you're not diminishing the love that you had for the pet that died. There's nothing that will erase that. There's nothing that will eliminate it. It's okay for you to love again and to share that love with a different pet. So those are some things that I hope will help. I'm glad that you're sharing that especially as well too, because it's very, you know, many people can, uh, hold on to, uh, especially guilt saying that, you know, this was, you know, this was my dog that I had for 18 years and they were my beloved companion. I'm never going to get another dog again. Um, and it's, it, it's so interesting in taking a look at your book when you see how Sandy and Omar, who are Scoopy's two dogs, they're, they share a same spiritual connection almost, even though they're two completely different dogs they both have a similar purpose. They're here to bring love and joy and happiness to complement all of that, what's already in Scoopy's life. And, you know, one of the things that I also love about your book is that death is a very sensitive subject. Indeed. And, you know, one of the things that we've talked about is uh, the affinity for Mr. Rogers that we both share from Mr. Rogers' neighborhood. And, yes. and early on, you know, many children, because this is probably one of the most well-known resources for, uh, for children to talk about death and grief and loss, as you go back to the episode of Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood from the late 60s, early 70s, I think it was when he lost his goldfish. And it was a very yes. simple way to talk about death and grief and loss. So I give you a lot of um, kudos because again, you know, sharing and talking about death and grief and loss is not easy. And we have a responsibility. We really do. As parents and caregivers and custodians of little ones, if our children come to us and say, could you talk with us about, could you talk to me about X and X and such and such? Mm -hmm. And there's times as adults, we may think we've got our act together, but we may not know how to respond to the questions that our children are asking us. And just a very comfortable, gentle nurturing way you're doing that 
to help kids. I think just even the way in which you're communicating with children about death and grief and loss, you're making more of an impact than you realize. And I love, I, I know we had talked about your illustrator, Lisa, again, just showing the cover art of your, of your book on screen. It's so sweet because when you see Scoopy and Sandy, and it's like, you know, it's long since been said that eyes are the gateway to the soul. Yes. And you have indeed. Scoopy staring into Sandy's eyes and Sandy's <laughs> eyes staring into Scoopy. You've got the beautiful flowers in the backdrop. I know that, you know, if if you're if you're a fan of 80s music like myself, Portia, you'll remember the Belinda Carlisle song, Heaven is a Place on Earth. And some people might yeah. say, oh, it's not possible. Heaven's only this big place up in the sky where you go to die. Um, talk to us about that feeling when you own a pet, because you're you're a very religious and spiritual person. You know, we've obviously, you know, our own conversations off air about that as well, too. Um, how do you feel, especially for those who are who are starting to get a pet at the beginning of this year? How can pets really help us right now to create that heaven on earth feeling that we all long for, but many of us think isn't possible? Oh my goodness. Well, for, for me with puppies, there's a love that is unconditional that they give to you that is indescribable. Um, you come home, they're ecstatic to see you. You are walking in the home. They want to go wherever you go. They're under your feet. They're playing with toys and wagging their tail and licking your face and just sad when you leave they whine when you go away and they can't see you there's there's a feeling i can't describe how wonderful that feels mm -hmm. it's a friend who is always a friend there's a time when perhaps you're sad your your pet will come and sit in your lap or when you're crying your pet will come and lick your tears i mean I, as i'm as i'm sitting here and I'm talking to you, I'm, I'm recalling times when I was sad. I'm recalling times when I was glad and what Sandy did. And, and, and even now with my pet that I have, what he's doing, it's just, it's, there's a relationship that you can have with a pet that just fills your heart and ministers to you, um, whether it's bringing you more joy or whether it's helping you through a time when you're very sad, there's there's nothing like the unconditional love of a pet. Um, I think the only thing that I can compare to that, which obviously is far greater, is the unconditional love of the Lord. Um, but for me, it's just a it's just it's medicine. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's really heartwarming. There's someone who is glad to see you and glad to be with you and wanting to help you and wanting to spend time with you and cares about your feelings. You can see the emotion. If you're sad or if you're hurt, they get quiet. Mm -hmm. If you're happy and excited, they get excited. They do. There's just, there's just a beautiful bond. And I think that every child should have that experience and every adult, there's nothing like it. There really isn't. It's, I feel that one of the many reasons why we all choose to come here and we're created and to enjoy this experience on earth is to really, uh, I, I think this is one thing that comes to mind as you're sharing it, dogs, cats, even especially, um, they have ways of helping us to remember the love that we are. My because goodness, I think that that's, yes. where, that's where many of us can miss the mark, right? When we oh. realize that everything in our life is just a reflection of us. My Dogs goodness. are unconditional love. So are yes. we. We might, you know, wake up one day and feel that we're less than or, you know, we had a bad day or we treated someone, you know, poorly. We wish we would have said something different. You know, we all have those mm -hmm. sorts of experiences in life. And, yes. we, and dogs are just there. Cats are there any sort of animal pet that we have is there to help us remember that we're showing up. We're doing, we're, we're, Indeed. we're choosing to be better versions of ourselves each and every day. We're beginning to wind That's down our time with our featured guest, Portia Claire here on episode number 138 of the children's book spotlight series. We appreciate kicking off our new year. 
here with us at Empowered Publicity with Portia and myself. We encourage all of you to head on over to Amazon.com if that is your preferred online vehicle of choice and purchase your copy of Best Friends Forever, A Puppy's Tale, courtesy of our friends at Miriam Laundry Publishing. If indeed you would like to go to Portia's official website, support her that way. You can also do that as well, PortiaYClaire.com. Bear in mind being on Amazon, if that's your preferred online vehicle of choice, you can leave a five-star review. One of the many ways to let Portia know that she is doing wonderful work, much needed work for children, parents, families, educators, and those who love great children's books. I also encourage all parents or caregivers of children, if, if your little one or someone that is a little one in your life has lost a pet, it can be a dog, it can be a cat, this is a perfect go-to. And I also encourage any sorts of uh, animal shelters, animal rescue organizations, SPCAs, uh, to, to have this in your office. Because to be able to have, you know, Portia, just having your book there, especially like going, I can just imagine if there is little ones across the country and around the world that are going and their their dog or their cat has to be euthanized, mm -hmm. put to sleep mm -hmm. or passes mm -hmm. away. And like there's they're going through those feelings and those emotions, like having your book right there can bring more healing in a, in a more readable time frame. So I just, you know, put out those intentions as as well too, um, you know. No, as you say that, John, I really, I, my, my, my hope is that my book would be a resource of care. That that's something that I really hope for children and adults um, all around the world. Thank you for that. Oh, you're most certainly welcome. And this actually ties in perfectly to one of the final questions that I wanted to to uh, to, to ask you. Going into again, you're about the author page, which I absolutely love in the back of, of your book. Is is that your love of children and family? has compelled you to write stories that will help them to recognize their importance, appreciate their value, and navigate through difficult life experiences. We touched upon this a little bit earlier in our time together. How do you feel that children's books, kid lit, children's literature especially, how do you believe that your book and books that are similar to yours help children as well as us big kids alike to be able to navigate through these difficult life experiences that we have and that we experience well i think um the book that i have written now best friends forever a puppy's tale is written through the eyes of a child um and it actually is written in language that i think um is true to what a child would say um and i believe that the actions of my parents throughout that book our true actions to what a parent would um, do and the things that the parents would say are also written in the book. Mm -hmm. um, I believe that conversation is powerful. And as we look through the eyes of a child when we are writing, um, I think we gain more as we listen um, to children and really hear what it is that they are saying and be sensitive to their needs. Um, I believe that we will help them to have conversation and to be more comfortable with talking about things that are challenging. Mm -hmm. And my hope is that with this particular story, that conversations will be able to be held with children and parents or children and grandparents or children and some other significant adult or guardian whether it be about a pet or whether it be about a person, whether it be about something that is a loss, that is a meaningful loss to the child. Um, my hope is that after reading the book, that children would be more comfortable with that conversation and parents would be more comfortable with that conversation mm -hmm. as well. So if we see things through the eyes of a child um, and, and give them a space where they're comfortable to ask questions and to talk um, and to allow them to feel those feelings and, and let them know it's okay to feel those feelings. I think we do them the best service. And I hope that my book is a, a tool, again, a resource of care that will help um, with this subject matter. I love the term resources of care, because again, kind of going back to Mr. Rogers, he would use the term expressions of care and expressions, um, just to just having things out there that care. The world's been, it, it seems, if, if you look at the news or television or the media, it could look like over the past two years, the world's been a pretty scary place. 
and even mm-hmm. you know beyond the scope of that and i think it's just a matter of what we choose to put out there how do we choose to utilize our platforms you are choosing to be of service to children to parents to grandparents to educators to all of those who love great children's books to those who have lost pets who have lost loved ones and i feel that the mission that you're on is being very much supported and it will continue to be supported on your end of things one of my favorite questions that i always love to ask push everything in life everything and everyone in life is always a teacher right we we learn we are we learn each and every day we're always yes. learning and growing um your book has undoubtedly helped you to learn many things what has best friends forever the process the experience writing the book sharing the book now promoting it what has this whole process taught you about yourself and what has it taught you about life well i think it's taught me that i can imagine something in my mind i can have a dream about something and i can actually make an effort to fulfill that dream mm. um it is it is possible to have something on the inside of your heart that you want to share with others um in a very public way mm-hmm. um and you can do that and you can do that well um my hope is that as i continue to share this story um and all of the other stories on the inside of me that i would do just what it is that i've desired to do all along and that's to serve children simply put i teach because i love children and what i do i believe will always be wrapped around teaching and my hope is that i will continue to grow and do that which i admonish parents to do listen to children mm-hmm. hear what's on their hearts and find ways to answer their questions ways that are simple ways that are helpful ways that are lasting and life changing for them mm-hmm. that will help them to go beyond where they are and continue moving forward that's my hope one of the most beautiful things in life is that when your hopes become reality when your hopes become your dreams and it, it is just it is really a privilege to work alongside you and to work with you, you and to share this this message and your work is just beginning to take flight so again we encourage all of you our listeners and viewers our fellow friends neighbors and shining stars if you haven't had a chance to do so to head on over to Porsche's official website Porsche whyclair.com if Amazon is your preferred online vehicle of choice you can purchase your copy there a best friends forever a puppy's tale courtesy of our friends at Miriam Laundry Publishing if Amazon is your preferred online vehicle of choice you can leave a five star review one of the many ways that you can pledge your support for Porsche to remind her that she is doing such a great job and sharing a much needed message series of messages for children parents families educators those who love great children's books and especially those little ones who have lost uh, their furry friends in the process We encourage all of you to stay connected with us at Empowered Publicity. There's some wonderful things that Porsche is going to be doing and sharing some other wonderful television interviews and features into 2022. So you can stay connected with us here at Empowered Publicity via any of our social media platforms of of choice. One of the many ways that we continue uh to uh to to keep the trolley going here at the children's book spotlight series we always love to give little tips of the cap to one of our favorite neighbors we've talked about him once or twice or thrice Mr. Rogers when he received his lifetime achievement awards at the um at the daytime emmy award shortly before he passed away and he did this in different uh in different contexts whether he was speaking at commencement speeches or talks across the country and he always kept the time Porsche whether it be 15 seconds 30 seconds or a full minute. Mm-hmm. Mr. Rogers encouraged us to remember those who help love us into being. My my. And that Beautiful. was his way of saying remember those that helped you along your path whether it be maybe you didn't believe in yourself, maybe you're going through a little bit of self-doubt, maybe that you were going through the proverbial divine storm. There's always angels on your path. It's a matter Indeed. of paying attention and expressing gratitude. You've obviously shared the, the the wonderful connection that you have 
with your father, as well as the wonderful connection that you share currently with your mother as well too. Yes. Who, are some, who are some of the other people that you would like to take the time to publicly recognize here on episode number 138 of the Children's Book Spotlight series that have helped love you, Portia Claire, into the end? Oh my goodness, there's so many people, um, so many family and friends. Um, my cousin, Marion David, has been an anchor for me since my father went home to be with the Lord. I'm so grateful for her and her encouragement. Um, my aunts, I have um, uncles and cousins who have just inspired me to keep moving forward and doing that which God has placed on the inside of me to do. Um, I'd like to thank Miriam Laundry for presenting me with an opportunity to share uh, my heart and to write it. I'd love to thank Lisa Alderson, the illustrator from my book, who actually took my vision and ran with it. When my mother saw the cover, she said, oh my goodness, that's my baby girl. That looks mm -hmm. just like you when you were a child. So thank you, Miss Alderson. Um, just so many people. I'd like to thank you, John, for oh. the opportunity to be here and to share my heart um, and to give this resource of care uh, to so many people who are around the world. I'm, I'm truly grateful. I'm grateful to God. I'm grateful to um, my school system who allowed me to share this book with my students um, and with all of the third graders who are in our building. Thank you, Marlboro County School District for your time and your care. Just so many people. Um, to Mel Green, who has been helping me with social media and understanding this platform and encouraging me to keep moving forward and keep sharing. Um, I'm just grateful. I'm grateful for the opportunity to share. I'm grateful for the people who have been so kind to me and for those who have purchased my book and who have shared it with their children and mm. who have been encouraged to purchase pets for their children since they have heard about my book. There's so many good things that have happened already. And I'm grateful. I'm grateful for all of it. That's, I really am. That's so wonderful, Portia. And I, I do have to say you are one of them. You know, there's a there's a difference between, and I've noticed this more uh, in, in my own life and my own journey is, is that there's times we say, I am grateful. And then there's times where you can really feel the gratitude. And, you know, the, the light in your heart that you share with children and in your book, it's truly felt. In, in our conversations, in this wonderful interview, you know, life can be a challenging place. It can, it can be a little bit of a struggle every now and again. And I think that having not just an upbeat and optimistic attitude, but really having faith and trust in yourself, in your journey, whether if you know if you're if you if you pray to God or if you pray to the Sun or uh, you know if you pray to Dr. Seuss, I would love to you know maybe meet a person <laughs> who, who you know prays to Dr. Seuss, right? But I, I think it's just so important to be able to, to to have that awareness and that faith and and trust in one's overall journey. You have given so freely from your heart to children, to parents, to families, to educators across South Carolina across the country, around the world. So one of the ways that we love to give back to the to the guests here that join us in the Children's Book Spotlight is we have a little segment called Three Wishes. So yes, our, our, our trusty Jeannie Lamp has gotten lots of mileage over the course of the past several years here on the Children's Book Spotlight series. This is a little tip of the cap to, of course, one of our favorite, uh, beloved uh, children's animated classics, Aladdin. We remember the late Robin Williams, the genie of the lamp. We all have it within us to help one another uh, bring to form and shape our dreams, our wishes, our goals. So you're being given three wishes today, Portia. Now they can be for yourself, they can be for your family, they can be for the planet, they can be for the children of the world. What would your three wishes be? Oh my goodness. Well, I guess my first wish would be um, that I would walk with wisdom in everything that I do say and think. My second wish would be that my resource of care would actually reach children in our country, and I dare say children around the world, as well as adults. And my third wish is that I would continue to be able to write children's books that would do that, which I desire to help children to recognize their quality, to appreciate their value, and mm -hmm. to 
actually navigate through challenging times. Hmm. I, I, and I feel experiences. Those are three doable wishes in in my eyes, and you're you're on such a beautiful path, and it, it, it's it really is a very humbling experience and an honor and a privilege to to be a part of your journey. Raise your hand if you have had fun on episode number 138 of the Children's Book Spotlight series. We see many hands on screen from myself and Portia, <laughs> also from the little ones on screen as well. And this is just the first trolley stop of 2022 on the Children's Book Spotlight series. There are many more to come. So if you are a children's author, if you're a children's illustrator, and you would like to share your inspiring story in the release of your brand new children's book on the Children's Book Spotlight series, just as Portia did here this week, you can head on over to our official website at empoweredpublicity.com. You can also stay connected with us via any of our social media platforms that you now see on screen, Facebook and Instagram at Empowered Publicity, Twitter at Empowered underscore PR. We do wish to give two tips of the cap. First of all, to one of our favorite neighbors. You remember him and you love him as the beloved Mr. McFeely on the long-running children's television program, Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. You will see Best Friends Forever, A Puppy's Tale, be featured on the January edition of the Empowered Publicity Neighborly Reviews bookcast with David Newell, myself and David Newell. So again, that is when David and I, we deliver brand new heartfelt reviews from the newest heartfelt children's books, from the Shining Stars here in the Kidlit community of Empowered Publicity. If you would like to be able to have David and I share your brand new children's book on a forthcoming edition of the Neighborly Reviews bookcast, you know where to connect with us. We also wish to give two tips of the cap to one of our favorite neighbors, Laura Cavanaugh, the host and executive producer of San Diego Living, the official home of Empowering Reads for Kids. Yes, on February the 2nd, you will see Best Friends Forever Puppies Tale be featured on Empowering Reads for Kids, which is the official television book review segment here at Empowered Publicity, courtesy of our friends at CBS 8, the CW San Diego. So if you are a children's author and would love to have your brand new children's book be featured in front of children, parents, families, and educators all throughout America's finest city, that is San Diego, California, it's just the nickname. I'm not calling it America's finest city just because I live here, even though it is a pretty darn tootin' fine city, you know where to connect with us at via our official website at empoweredpublicity.com or any of our social media platforms you now see on screen. And we are so looking forward to being of service to many more of you throughout the year. So if you feel that we can be of service to you, if you are looking to facilitate your own book media tour in a city of your choosing, if you would like for us to help you facilitate a feature television interview or television interviews in a city of your choosing, if you are looking for more information on our media coaching and mentoring program, if you feel that we can assist you with this, you can schedule your courtesy discovery call Head on over to empoweredpublicity.com and let us see how we can be of service to you. One final time, you can head on over to Portia Claire's official website, PortiaYClaire.com. You can also head on over to Amazon.com if that's your preferred online vehicle of choice. You can purchase your copy of Best Friends Forever, A Puppy's Tale, courtesy of our friends and neighbors at Miriam Laundry Publishing. And again, by leaving a five-star review on Amazon, that is one of the many ways that you can pledge your support for Portia and to help remember that she is doing much needed work for children, parents, families, educators, and those who love great children's books. We, of course, want to thank you for spending some time with us to kick off the new year at Empowered Publicity and the Children's Book Spotlight Series. If these messages that Portia has shared here with us the messages found within her brand new children's book, Best Friends Forever Puppies Table Tale. If they have inspired you, if they have brought love and joy into your heart, if they are now helping, if Portia's messages, her brand new children's book are helping you, especially in the grieving process, the healing process of losing a furry friend. We encourage you, if you haven't had the chance to do so, to subscribe to Empowered Publicity's official YouTube channel and share this very special trolley stop that has been episode number 138 of the Children's Book Spotlight series. Again, we wish to thank all of you for your continued support of Empowered Publicity into 2022, for your support of the Children's Book Spotlight series, for your support of children's authors and illustrators such as Portia, who again are doing much needed work, especially for our little neighbors all across the country and all around the world, for your support of children's bookstores and libraries as they truly are the pillars of our community. We want to thank all of you above all else for your support of the children and for helping us to walk home the children of the world. Our favorite neighbor, Mr. Rogers, let us remember him one more time, a little tip of the cap. He 
somehow weighed 143 pounds for his entire natural adult life. That was his way. He shared it through many, many different ways, uh, but through those three numbers, 143, during his time in Mr. Rogers' neighborhood, and as he walked this earthly plane, that was his way of saying that I love you. One letter in I, four letters in love, three letters in you. What we like to say is a little tip of the cap to Mr. Rogers. We like to say 243. As Portia was kind enough to give us some of her free time this week here on the program. There's two letters in we, four letters in love, three letters in you. Mr. Rogers helped us to remember that we're loved and we're special just the way that we are. So we are here to remind you, Portia and I, that you are loved, you are special, just the way that you are. You, you are perfect, you are whole, you are healthy, you are complete, just the way that you are, that we like you, that we love you just the way that you are. Indeed. As we hear the trolley, that means that it is time to go. So for Portia Claire, for myself, John Massalonis, thank you for spending some free time with us here to kick off 2022. Many more trolley stops to come. We hope that you have enjoyed episode number 138 of the Children's Book Spotlight Series. Thank you for helping us to walk home. The children of the world, our fellow friends, our fellow neighbors, and of course, our fellow shining stars. Goodbye for now. Bye-bye. Love you, Mommy. Thank you for everything. Thank you, John.